Hey everyone, so we hope that you enjoy our latest picture of Jungle Monster Trout. Uh, we really had a good time staying at Rodex Ranch. Many thanks to, to uh, Kevin for accommodating us. Uh, this is our second year returning to the lake and uh, we didn't catch as many fish but the quality of fishing was much better. As you can see in the, in the video, we got into quite a few bigger fish. Uh, it's too bad I lost that bigger one, um, but at least we had we, 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 got, we got to play with it for a few minutes. So for this video, we're going to go through the gear that we use in during that trip and I'll provide a little bit of an uh, introduction on fly fishing because quite a few people have been asking about that and they're not too sure what setup they should be using. So the first thing we'll talk about are uh, the rods and reels and as I mentioned in the last video, um, the fly fishing rods or fly fishing uh, rods and reel, the setup in general, uh, ranks from one weight up to over 10 weight. So the higher the number you go, um, the, the larger the target size, the target fish uh, you are going for. Uh, so the typical setup is around five, four or five weight. If you're fishing for trout or small salmon, uh, the four or five weight setup is uh, generally the, the standard uh, setup you will go with first um, because you can if you really get into fly fishing you can end up with many different setups and uh, it's good to if you're just starting out an introductory setup would be the four and five weight a standard length of a fly fish rod is around nine foot long it can get longer than that if you're fishing in a large river or it can get much shorter than that if you're fishing in a smaller creek but if you're doing lake fishing or just standard river fishing a nine foot nine foot six uh, it's your standard length to go with the fishing rod that we use in this video um, are the five weight rod and these are nine foot long and they actually custom made with a rain shadow blank so you can actually get uh, you can actually have many different brands to choose from and they vary in quality and price as well. So you can, if you're just starting out, you can, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money to invest in a cheap uh, fly fishing rod. And if you're not sure if you want to get into fly fishing or not, just, just get a fairly cheap rod, go out and cast around and see how you like it. Uh, but if you really get into fly fishing, Definitely invest in, in a good rod, spend a bit more money on it and typically a more expensive rod has a pretty good warranty as well. They generally have a lifetime warranty and so if you break it or if something does happen to it, you can get a replacement pretty fast. Besides the number system that meets the target fish that you're after for a fly fishing rod, um, going from one weight to over 10 weight, uh, you typically you hear um, the terms slow and fast action uh, to categorize these fly rods. So a fast action rod are uh, rods that respond to your action right away because they're usually stiffer, whereas a slow action rod uh, respond to your action uh, usually more slowly uh, because they're not as stiff, they're usually more flexible. So what I would suggest you do to go into a fly fishing shop, pick up a few different rods, just try it out, and a few different types of rods, try it out how you fit and see how it feels in your hands before you make that purchase. When it comes to fly fishing reels, again, they vary in quality and prices. So depending on your budget and how much fly fishing you decide to do, uh, you have many different choices. So you can get a fly fishing reel down to 20, 30, $40, uh, just if you're only fishing for several times a year. Or you can invest in a fly fishing reel that's several hundred dollars uh, if you do it quite often. Uh, the reels that we use in this video are Islander reels. And Islander reels are actually made on Vancouver Island. And uh, these are beautiful looking reels and they come in many different colors. So we got silver, we got green, uh, we got this gum metal slate color. And I believe they do come in gold and black as well. But my favorite is actually these three colors, the silver green and the uh, gum metal. Uh, so besides being beautiful reels, uh, these actually perform really well and that's what you're paying for. If you notice in during that video while I'm fighting that big fish and how fast the fish is running and the drag was just screaming, uh, you gotta have a pretty nice drag um, if you're fighting a big fish that runs like that. So this drag is very, very smooth. It 
takes the line out without any pauses without you don't have to you don't have to worry about the reel suddenly just stops or it suddenly falls apart because the, the, the spool is spinning too fast uh, so reliability that's what you're paying for these Islander reels come in many different sizes. Uh, the ones that we use uh, in this video are the LX series and, and we use the 3.4 and the 3.2 and they come in many other different sizes like I said they, you can get much bigger ones for larger fish uh, you can also get a few the, the smaller ones for the small creek fishing. Uh, so before you go out and buy a reel definitely go talk to uh, someone at the fly fishing store and figure out which reel matches with which rod before you make that purchase. Uh, you don't want to end up with a really big fly fishing reel to match with a trout fly fishing rod and that just doesn't work and it doesn't it affects your casting ability as well so it definitely want to get the right setup. The next thing we'll talk about are the lines that go on your fly fishing reel. If you ever walk into a fly fishing store you, you'll notice that there are just hundreds of different lines you know covering up the entire wall and you wouldn't know which one to choose from. There's so many different types. There's floating line, there's sinking line, there's different types of sinking line. So what exactly should you buy? Well the two very standard fly fishing line that we use are the floating line and the intermediate sink and that's exactly what we use in this video. Um, the floating line uh, is exactly what its name implies. It actually floats on the surface. It actually sits on top of the surface and it's usually used for dry fly fishing. Uh, so you cast out the line, the line sits on top of the water, the fly doesn't get sinks, uh, the, the fly doesn't sink down because it, the line stays on the top. Uh, but you can also fish with wet flies as well um, with a floating line. If you're fishing in fairly shallow water, uh, so let's say if you have a wet fly that sinks down a little bit, uh, you can still use a floating line so you don't, you don't end up snagging on the bottom because you're staying just a little bit below the surface. The other line that you should have is the intermediate sink. Uh, so intermediate sink actually sinks below the surface but at a fairly slow rate. Uh, so you want to use this line if you're fishing in water, let's say over 5-10 feet deep and uh, so you can actually let the line to bring your fly down to the strike zone. So the, the very, a very popular brand of line that uh, most people use and that I use are the Scientific Anglers. So this brand here, um, if for floating line, we usually go with the GPX which is a pretty uh, standard uh, introductory line to use as a floating line. Um, the other one it's I don't have the box for it. The intermediate sink, the clear intermediate sink is the steel water series that they have. Um, so I actually have it on this reel right here. So let's pull this out a little bit and you can see what's going on. So you can see this fly fishing line is actually clear. So as the name implies, clear intermediate sink. It's, it's a clear line that sinks below the surface. It's clear so that the fish actually can't see that line. And it, it casts pretty nicely as well. Uh, both, both these lines cast pretty nicely. Uh, if you're just starting out, uh, they're definitely pretty good lines to go with. And, but it's not, a, it's not an entry level line. Uh, most experienced anglers, most experienced lake anglers also go with these two setups as well. Once you have your fly fishing line, what do you do? When I first started out fly fishing, I had no idea how to attach your fly onto your line. Do you tie it directly to the fly fishing line? I mean, this line is so thick, so if you tie the fly directly onto it, how are you going to catch fish? That is just not possible, right? And that's, that's one question, one confusion that people t have never done, uh, who have never done fly fishing tend to ask is, what exactly do you do once you have a fly fishing line? Well, the next thing you need to do is to attach a leader to it. So a leader is actually just your monofilament uh, fishing line and that needs to be tied onto the fly fishing line. And there are many different ways to do that. You first have to tie a loop on that fly fishing line and that loop is permanent. You, you don't have to change it unless it breaks after, let's say, two, three dozen trips. Uh, you, you can ask your 
uh, ask the fly fishing store to tie it for you or you can actually tie it yourself as well. There's many different ways of doing it. We won't get into that today. Uh, you can also buy a pre-made loop that you can tie onto and glue onto the fly fishing line as well. So from that loop, you just have to tie your leader onto it, your fishing line onto it. Uh, you, quite often you hear about tapered leaders. Taper simply means that the, fly, the leader that you have goes from fairly, fairly thick from the fly fishing line down to fairly thin to down to uh, to where you tie the hook on is fairly thin. Uh, the reason for the leader to be tapered is to it allows you to cast a little bit. It allows that fly the, your entire line to turn over pretty easily uh, when you when you cast it out. You can actually buy tapered leaders from the fishing store. Uh, but they're fairly pricey and uh, if you really don't have the time and have the money, you can definitely buy those and tie them directly onto the fly fishing line. They're convenient, they come in the package, but again, uh, it's a fair amount of investment because you can actually tie a tapered leader fairly easily. So what I usually do is I tie, uh, I bring out 12 pound maximum test, uh, 12 pound test maximum ultra green and I tie that, uh, tie a loop that connects onto the loop of the fly fishing line. And at the other end, I'll keep tying, simply using blood knots, you're tying, you're connecting 10 pound test to the 12 pound test, um, and then eight pound test to the 10 pound and so on. And that goes down to six pound, uh, four pound test, where at the end you can tie your fly onto it. It's a fair amount of work. You can do this the day before your fishing trip and just tie several up and uh, then you're ready to go and just make sure you cut that, cut the tag of uh, down to the knot so it doesn't get cat, uh, caught up when you're reeling the fish in, when it goes in through the guides. So the length of the leader uh, varies a little bit. If you're using a floating line, uh, the, the leader usually is around 10 foot, 12 foot long uh, between the fly line and the fly. Whereas if you're using the intermediate sink, uh, this is clear already, so we don't have to worry about the fish seeing it. Uh, what I usually do is I, my leader is fairly short. This one is only about maybe three or four feet long to the fly. So from the fly line to the fly, it's three or four feet. If you, this line here, this intermediate sink goes all the way down to the depth where you uh, want your fly to be. If your leader is too long, because the fly is a little, little lighter, what's going to happen is if the leader is too long, that, that fly is going to be all the way up here and your line is going to be down here so you're not actually fishing uh, where the fish are. So by having the leader fairly short and you can keep that fly in the strike zone. So the last thing we'll talk about in this video are flies. There are tens of thousands of different fly patterns that you can choose from for fishing, for fly fishing. And that's um, part of the fun and challenging part uh, when it comes to fly fishing. Uh, you can tie your own flies or you can go into the store and simply pick out a few flies that are recommended by the shop owner and try those. Uh, you uh, usually want to try to match your fly pattern to what the trout are feeding in the lake. So if you lay feeding on uh, let's say mayflies on the surface, you want to use uh, mayflies that sits on the surface. Uh, so, or if you want to, if they're feeding on leeches, you want to use a leech pattern that uh, below the surface, and and so on. There's just so many different scenarios, and that's why you, you usually see experienced fly anglers with all these big boxes of flies with so many different patterns. Uh, most usually they end up using only a few uh, for the trip, but it's good to have all the patterns um, with you, so you're well equipped it because the for lake fishing. It can really vary from day to day. Uh, one day the fish are feeding on the surface, the next day the fish are feeding on the bottom for different things. Um, so definitely come prepared. Uh, before we go into flies, I uh, just want to explain what a wet fly and a dry fly is. So that's another question that people tend to ask when they get into fly fishing. Why exactly is a wet fly and why exactly a dry fly? And the best way to demonstrate that is by getting this 
big glass of water, not that thirsty yet, but I might drink it later, uh, and show you what exactly a dry fly and a wet fly does. So let's take out the dry fly. And I'm just gonna pick one from the box here. So you can't really see that. We'll have a camera a little closer in a minute. But this dry fly right here, well, if I put it in the water, it'll just sit on the surface like that. And it will sit on the surface because the material used to tie this fly, it's, it doesn't, it repels water. And you can also put some water repellent uh, material onto the fly while we're fishing so it stays on the surface. So this dry fly here actually imitates uh, flies, insects that have hatched from the water and flying around and they often come down and sit on the water and that's when the fish come up and grab it. On the other hand, wet flies or nymphs are flies that sink uh, all the way to the bottom but at a very slow rate. So let's grab a wet fly like this. This is a chronomet pattern and if I chuck this in the water, see what happens. And it sinks all the way to the bottom. And the reason it sinks, because it actually has a little middle bead on it. And the material used is actually not water repellent. Uh, so it actually will just sink all the way down to the depth where you want it to be. So you, usually you'll use a wet fly uh, to imitate insects or invertebrates that swim uh, below the surface. Uh, things like leeches, things like chronomids that hatch out from the, the mud on the, uh, on the lake bottom and, and so on. The flies that I use during that, this trip is actually fairly simple. As I mentioned before, I'm not really a fly tire. I usually tie a few patterns and, and that's all I know and the rest I'll buy from the fly fishing store. Uh, it's the, 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 ones that, the one that I use uh, during this trip is actually just a leech pattern or, or woolly bugger. Um, like this one right here and it's olive or brown and for some reason they just liked it, uh, they, they liked it a lot. So this one has a bead right on, on the front so it actually sinks, it actually sinks a little bit um, when, when you cast it out. So even if you're using a floating line with a leader on it, uh, because of that, the weight of that bead it will actually sink down a little bit and it will keep it at where the fish are feeding. Uh, so where we fished during this trip, uh, we were fishing in a fairly heavily structured area and uh, we could see fish coming up to the surface feeding and or feeding just below the surface and they were feeding on uh, damsels which are little insects and what happens is they, they hatch out and they climb up the branches and they were falling into the water and swimming away. and. And I guess when, when that happens, the fish were coming up and feeding on them. And even though this is a leech pattern, it actually looks somewhat similar to a damsel. And for some reason, by stripping really fast, uh, the fish were not really that selective and they would just went for it. So there you have it. So these are the gear that we use for this trip to catch those jungle monster trout. And uh, if you have any more questions on fly fishing, please feel free to leave a comment and I'm always happy to answer them and uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel and we always have new videos coming out every month and we hope you find it very useful. And if you need more information on fishing in British Columbia, uh, please go to our website at fishingwithrod.com. So until next time, good luck fishing.